Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you into the inner sanctum. Come in. Come on in. Well, let me tell you about the uh, loot we picked up in our family. Mother got a new broom. Yeah, she needed it ever since she wrecked the old one in a forced landing on the roof last month. <laughs> Uncle William got a fur-lined straitjacket. And dear, darling little Aunt Matilda got a new hat pin. Yes, her last one got stuck in the skull of her fourth husband. <laughs> all right. Turn your lights low and your radio up. And remember that all the actors getting killed on this program are being well paid for it. The winter winds moaned around the gabled house like a wandering band of wailing women. As Caroline Giles, puzzled and frightened by something she's seen in the gathering dusk, makes her way into the living room. This is young Mrs. Giles' first night at the family mansion built by her husband's grandfather. Only this morning, the attractive bride arrived after a honeymoon trip in Europe. When she enters the huge, shadow-filled room, she notices the servant girl at the window. She's a young girl, the only other person in the house. And Caroline can see that she's scarcely able to control the terror she feels. Mary? Yes, ma'am. What's going on out there? Uh, nothing. Uh, when will Mr. Giles be home? He should be here within an hour. Why are those cars stopping out there? Cars, Mrs. Giles? Oh, really, Mary, you must see them as well as I do. Three of them stopped within a few minutes. Look, there's another one. Uh, maybe that's Mr. Giles. No, the car isn't coming into the driveway. It's stopping outside. Who are these people, Mary? I, I, I don't know. Why should they stop outside? What do they want? I don't know. I don't know. I... Oh, right, Mary. You don't know. You don't know. There's no reason to become hysterical. Mrs. Giles, come away from the window. But why? You don't know them. But... Oh, please come away from the window. Mary, why? Now... Oh, I warned you. They're throwing rocks through the window. Get down, Mrs. Giles. Get down on the floor. You'll be hurt. But Mary... Oh, please. Mrs. Giles, just pray that they don't come in here. Just pray that they don't. Uh, wait a minute, Mary. I hear sirens. It's the police. Oh, the police. Oh, oh thank heaven. They'll make them go away. Mrs. Giles, I'm Richard Croyton, the mayor of this town. I'm sorry we had to come here under these circumstances. How do you do? Uh, this is John Dent, our local chief of police. Mrs. Giles, I'm very sorry about what happened tonight. The crowd is gone now. I'll do my best to see that it never happens again. I've also come to offer what apologies I can. Must have been a frightful experience for you on your first day here. Our people may appear civilized enough, but in many ways we're a very primitive community. I uh, suppose your husband told you that. No, he didn't. But David told me about you, Mr. Croydon. He said you were the oldest friend he has. I believe you live down the road? Yes, yes, that's right. That's how I happened to see those cars coming, and I phoned Chief Dent. But why did those cars come, Mr. Croydon? Why? Well, yes. Why should those people who hardly know me do a thing like this? Well, didn't David tell you? Tell me what? Uh, where is David now? He went to town. I expect him any minute. Well, uh, perhaps he'll tell you what you want to know when he returns. Why can't you tell me? I, I'm not sure that I care to. Mr. Dent, perhaps you'll be kind enough to explain this? Uh... Well, them people weren't after you, ma'am. They were after the man you married. Dent? But what? Dent, uh, if, if Mr. Giles hasn't told her, I, I don't think it's your place to do so. Well, the woman has a right to know. The reason them folks are trying to kill Mr. Giles is because they think he's a, a murderer. Some call him even worse than that. What do you mean? Well, Mrs. Giles, uh, two years ago, a series of killings began in this here county. Girls, young girls... Four of them were found on lonely roads, stabbed to death. Homicidal maniac, or that's what the state police officer said. And my husband... Well, your husband was arrested for them crimes. He was tried right here, but they let him go. Well, we didn't have enough evidence. David, can't believe it. Why should they suspect him? Well, he knew one of them girls, and, uh... Well, he had been sent away, ma'am. Sent away? What are you talking about? Well, everyone knows there was something wrong with him. 
He had to go to an asylum for a while. Uh, that's quite enough, then. Uh, Mrs. Giles, I must tell you this. David was discharged from the rest home, completely cured. It, it was nothing more than a nervous breakdown. Now, Dent, you have no right to frighten her like this. I'm not frightened. And I'm very grateful to Mr. Dent for telling me what he did. I just want to know one thing. My husband was acquitted. Why should they still believe he's guilty? Because since he left town six months ago, there ain't been none of these murders. Not a single one. Now that he's back, they'll start again. That's what you believe, Mr. Dent? Oh, no, ma'am, but that's what the folks are saying. Thank you. And now, if you don't mind, I'd like to be alone. Uh, Mrs. Giles, if there's anything I can no, do... I... No, thank you. There's, there's nothing. Good night, Mr. Corden. Good night. Come along, then. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Hello? Operator? Will you give me the number of the railroad station, please? I... No. Never mind, operator. Don't bother. Are you going to leave, Carolyn? David. You heard? Yes. And I heard everything else my very old friend, Mr. Dent, told you. I was behind the other door. Then why didn't you come in? Why ruin their fun? Besides, I was curious to see just what your reaction would be. David, why did they have to tell me? Why couldn't you? You think this was an easy thing to tell to a newly married bride? I would have found out sooner or later. I did plan to tell you, Carolyn, in due time. That's why I ordered Mary not to say anything. Darling, it isn't true. This is all an insane dream, a nightmare. No, Carolyn, it's not a dream, but in many ways it is a nightmare. Were you going to run away from me, Carolyn? Is that why you phoned the station? Yes. Carolyn, if you want to leave me, I can't blame you. I realize it may be asking a little too much of any woman to be my wife and to live here. Why did you come back here, David? Because I want to prove to them that I'm not what they think I am. And I was hoping you'd help me. I thought maybe you loved me enough for that. Carolyn, I'm terribly sorry it must end this way. I'm not going to leave, David. Carolyn, I hope you understand what you're saying. You may be risking your life by remaining here. I love you, David. I risk it. I want you to be certain. Because in the end, I may fail and be put to death. To death? Yes, there are going to be other murders. Other murders? Don't ask me how I know this, but I'm almost positive that sometime tonight, a girl uh, in or near this community will be killed. Brutally stabbed to death. I'll have to go out tonight and see if I can prevent it. Do you still want to remain? Why are you telling me this? Because I want to know if you really love me or if you said what you did to placate a madman. To quiet a homicidal maniac who may still murder you. Are you going to stay, Carolyn? Yes. I'm going to stay, David. Now, just try to calm down. I saw them. I saw them. Now, Mary, try to pull yourself together. Tell me what you saw. There was a man out there. A man moving around. Are you sure of it, Mary? Yes. I don't see anyone. Well, maybe you can't see him from here, but I saw him from the window of my room. All right. Let's look out the window of your room. I I don't want you to think I, I'm seeing things. I, I'm not the kind of girl who sees things. I didn't say you were, Mary, but I... Well, I don't notice anything unusual from your window either. You... You don't see anything? Just the lawn, the tree. Huh? Mary, I know we've all been under strain today. I, I guess we're a little jumpy, aren't we? I... I guess so. But I wish Mr. Giles were here. I... I don't like us two being alone. I, I know, Mary. But it can't be helped. Now, come, dear. I think you'd better go back to bed. But I'm afraid to be alone in here. They can get in through the window. Then we'll close the shutters. Help me, Mary. All right, ma'am. There we are. The outside doors are all closed. Yes, I, I locked them myself, but well, still, this is a very old house. They can get in. Well, there's a lock on your door that works quite well. You can lock the door from the inside, and then you'll be as safe as you can possibly be. All right. I'll do that when you go. Very well, Mary. I'll go back to my room. I'm 
I'm sure you'll sleep now. Good night. I... I hope so. Good night, Mrs. Giles. Did you lock the door, Mary? Yes, I, I just did. I'm turning out the light now. I'm sorry I troubled you, Mrs. Giles. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Oh, she's right. I... Oh, I must be hearing things. Mrs. Giles! There's someone in here! The light, I... Oh, let go of my hand! Mrs. Giles! Mary? He was locked in here with me. Help me, Mrs. Giles! Mary! Oh, he... he got a knife. I can feel it, a knife! Oh, no, let go of me, please. No, no, no! This is your host again. You ready to go on with our story of married bliss? I mean bliss. You know, if Caroline had only listened to this program, she'd have realized that it's always a mistake to marry a man who has a weakness for murdering the domestic help. It uh, not only makes house cleaning difficult, but creates a terrible servant problem. <laughs> That there is one compensation in marrying a homicidal maniac. When you'd call your mate crazy, you'd be so right. <laughs> well, let's get on with our story. As you remember, Caroline couldn't break into Mary's room. And now she rushes to the telephone and dials the operator. Hello? Get me the police. Hurry, please. Hello? This is Mrs. Carolyn Giles. Would you please send someone right away? I think there's been a murder. Hang up, Carolyn. <laughs> Hang up that phone. Just... What's the matter with you? Why didn't you do as I told you? I don't want the police to know about this until we're ready. That, that room. You just came out of Mary's room. Yes, I saw her. Saw her? You were in there all the time. You were locked in the room with a huge killer. Carolyn. You murdered her. They're right about you. You murdered her. Carolyn, you're no, 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 no. Stop it now. Stop it. Sorry I had to do that. Now, you must get a grip on yourself. Yes, David, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm all right now. I, how did you get into her room? I heard screams when I parked the car. The window to her room was open and I climbed through. I saw her on the bed and then I unlocked the door and came in here. You found the window open? Mm. But I locked it myself. I bolted the shutters. Well, it's open now. When did you bolt the window? A little while ago. The murderer must have been in the room hiding. But she locked herself in. I guess he escaped through the window. Yes. Perhaps that's what happened. You still think I killed her? I don't know what to think anymore. The way you came from her room. I explained that. Yes, I suppose you did. Carolyn, now listen to me. If I killed her, do you think I'd be talking to you now? Here, look. Son. Hmm. If I'd murdered Mary, the next step would be to kill you. And you see how easy it is for me to do it. Now, Carolyn, you believed in me before. I'm asking you to believe in me again. I don't want the police to know I left this house tonight. Dents like the rest of them. He hates me. He'd be glad to accuse me of this crime. Now, Carolyn, I want you to say I was home all night with you. And if I don't? I've got this gun, Carolyn. If you let me down, nothing much will matter then. <laughs> Now, that might be the police, Carolyn. I'm going to open the door. Uh, good evening, Mr. Giles. Good evening, Dent. You got here quickly. Maybe that's because I was kind of expecting to come. Oh, have you been watching my house? I ain't saying. When I got that radio call, I didn't lose any time. Oh, Mrs. Giles, you phoned in something about a murder? Yes, sir. Our girl, Mary, she's in there. Oh. Mr. Giles, are you accusing me of this too, Dent? Well, it's mighty funny, right here in your own home. This time, I can easily prove that I had nothing to do with it. My wife and I were together all night. Is, uh, is this right, Mrs. Giles? That, that's right, Mr. Dent. <laughs> Hello, David. Come in. 
I understand that Dent questioned you again this morning. Yes, but he didn't get anywhere. I think even he's beginning to get the idea that I'm not a murderer. I see. Oh, Carolyn, dear. Oh, hello there. David, why didn't you warn me your friend was coming tonight? Well, I phoned Richard only a few minutes ago. You see, Carolyn, I have to go out. Go out? Yeah. I didn't want to leave you alone after everything that's happened. I, I, I know, but... Well, couldn't we come with you, David? No, I'm afraid not. Why not? Well, it might be dangerous. David, where are you going? I'm sorry, dear, but I can't tell you. It won't be a long trip. It's only about 20 miles or so. That's all the information I can give you. Ha- has this something to do with these murders? Perhaps. Now, David, I wouldn't advise you to take matters into your own hands. I'm afraid I have to, Richard. You see, the police haven't gotten very far, and my life is at stake. Your life? Isn't it obvious? The people are stirred up about these crimes. Who can tell when one of them may take it into his head to murder me? It's becoming a matter of the killer's life or my own. Furthermore, there's another reason why I must solve this. A reason I can't divulge right now. Why not? Darling, please don't ask me. I think that after tonight, all this will be over. Bye, Richard. Goodbye, Carolyn. Bye. Richard? Yes? What did he mean by another reason? Well, Carolyn, if he's right about the murderer, then the next logical victim will be a girl, an attractive girl who's very close to him. So that people will suspect him even more. And the most likely person is yourself. Ten o'clock. Did he tell you how long we'd stay away, Richard? Uh, No, no, he didn't. Uh, Shall I deal another round? That must be David. Hello? David. Are you all right, darling? Well, when will you be home? All right, I'll I'll tell Richard. Goodbye. David's on his way home. He'll be here in an hour. Where did he call from? town called Waverly. He says he knows who the killer is. That's impossible. How do you know? Because if he knew... He'd never have made that call. I don't understand. It was a perfect signal to the murderer. Murderer? It told him that he was safe. That he had all the time he needs. A full hour. Richard. You... Please. I must warn you not to do anything foolish. It will only make matters worse for yourself. What do you have in your hand? A knife. You see, I simply press this button and it snaps open. (laughs) Try to control yourself, Carolyn. Don't try to fight the inevitable. Take my advice and submit to what will come. It will be less painful. Let go of me. You see how futile it is to struggle. I have the knife at your throat now. I have only to move my arm and it's all over. Why don't you? Why are you waiting? There's no rush. For once, I have a little time. Time? Time seems to extend the experience. I must warn you not to scream. The moment you do it will all come to an end, suddenly, violently. Screams are dangerous. One can never tell who hears them. Take the knife away. No. Please. Fear seems to do something to your features, Carolyn. You look extraordinarily beautiful. And I must compliment you on your self-control. You still haven't even raised your voice. You you, you can't get away with this, Richard. David will come home and find you. That's not quite how it will happen. David will come home and find you. I shall have the rare pleasure of seeing his reaction. And then it will be his turn. You're going to kill him? Yes, it will be a new experience. I've never murdered a man before. It can't possibly work. You'll be caught. I plan to be. But I shall plead self-defense. Everyone will believe me because I'll tell them he murdered you. It 
It's very difficult not to scream, isn't it, Carolyn? <laughs> they won't believe you. They'll never believe you. Oh, yes, they will. My police commissioner hates David because he was freed after Dent arrested him. And his position also depends upon me. Oh, I admire you, Carolyn. None of the others held out this long. And you must almost be insane with fear and terror, aren't you? And yet... I won't scream, Richard. I won't. In the end, you will. I won't. You must. I won't. You really are extraordinary, Carolyn. I won't. <laughs> Carolyn. I don't understand. You were here. Almost all evening. I phoned from a neighbor's house to make him force his hand. I got back just in time. Oh. Still alive. Yes. Richard. David. Did you know? You, you couldn't have been that clever. I suspected you, Richard, but I wasn't certain until tonight. It, it, it was a trap. And Carolyn the bait. All a trick. I'm afraid that's what it was, Richard. Why did you make them think it was me? Why? Because you were a Giles. Always a little too clever. Never quite one of us. But you'll die for this, David. You'll be blamed for this and the other murders. I've left letters accusing you of the crimes. And Dent will believe them. Even over your wife's testimony. You, you'll die for this. They'll kill, kill you. Dead. David, is it true what he said about the letters? Probably. Dent will never believe me. Good evening, Mr. Giles. Dent. Yeah. Been out there all night. When I heard the shots, I came running in. So you killed him. Yes, but I had to, Dent. He was going to murder my wife. That's true. He's the homicidal maniac you've been looking for. You've got to believe that, Mr. Dent. Of course I believe it, ma'am been suspecting him for a long time. Ever since he spread them stories to folks about Mr. Giles. And I heard what he said before he died. You've got nothing to fear now, Mrs. Giles. You and your husband can live here and we'll be proud to have you. And some folks will be mighty ashamed about what they've been saying and doing. Um, I reckon I'd better call in. Get them to take this... this man away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you thought David was crazy when he fooled you, didn't he? As the squirrel said to the walnut tree, you're still not as nutty as people. <laughs> and that brings us to the moral of this story, which is taken from a retired witch who once said, Why slice your husband's head off? But it's how easy to nag him to death. <laughs> oh, here's a, a little thought to take to bed. Never murder your enemies, because then you'll have no one to hate but yourself. <laughs> Inner Sanctum has been brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.